Uh, and now I will switch to English. And uh, so uh, I'm happy that like Odessa Photo Festival have the second part of uh, uh, the online uh, events. And our first event is actually the presentation about the German Photography Academy. And I am happy to introduce that today we'll have our guests is uh, Boris Eldaksen and Wolfgang Zurborn. And actually this event is supported by the uh, Goethe Institute and Bavarian House in Odessa. So dear guests, you're welcome. Thank you very much for this introduction. It's a pleasure for me to introduce the German Photographic Academy um, in this talk. A little bit of our history, our members, uh, what we do, what possibly is so unique about it. And my colleague Wolfgang Zuborn is going to help me. I'm a member for eight years, Wolfgang for 22 years. So he is a wealth of knowledge. And whenever there's something interesting um, to add, he's going to come into the talk. When I was thinking about how to present uh, the Deutsche Fotografische Akademie, um, I thought actually we are something like a German TED talk of photography with a very long history. It means like for a hundred years, we are not spreading ideas, but we are spreading photography, photography as art that we see as strong and important. We are, um, an association, that means we have no profit. We have 140 members. Each member pays a little bit of member fee and that's it. And most of the work we do, we do for free for everybody, for public access. So the core of our work is dialogue. Dialogue about photography as art. Before I came in, I became a member in 2013 and started to digitalize the activities in 2016. Before I came in, DFR was a format that was more or less the same over a long time. It means the members were meeting twice a year in about early May and end of October, early November to present work for a weekend. And that was um, the work of the members or of guests. Any member can invite a guest to present the work. And the usual format is 20 minutes presentation and 20 minutes talk. And the talk and the discussion is something unique because um, DFR is not a school. It's not something that is thinking into one way. It's a basket of individuals. Everybody has hers, his own opinion. And that exchange, that dialogue is what is so fascinating in the work that DFR is doing. So one thing we do, we do is twice a year, the public conference, and that happens across Germany. We have different institutions that are happy to host us for a weekend. And the unique thing is it's open to the public, it's free. Everybody can come, everybody can participate. The only thing you need to do until today is to understand the German language and that's it. I think that is something unique that most uh, photographic associations don't have. If they do their business, it's members only, for us, it's always open. And um, what we do according to um, the conference is a portfolio walk. And I'm very happy that Wolfgang is here because the portfolio walk is something that is like Wolfgang's child as he, that he is organizing uh, and managing. So I hand over to Wolfgang to explain what we do and how we open the doors for newcomers and talents, please. Yeah, we started uh, the portfolio work in 2007 because it was very important for me that beside the presentations at the symposium, uh, which uh, was really often with very controversial discussions. Uh, so uh, we thought it's very important to give also young photographers the chance 
mostly really students coming, um, finishing their studies uh, and have the possibility to present their new work. And, uh, and we didn't want to confront them di di directly with a very controversial discussion. So we thought it's a very good thing to invite uh, um, um, young, young photographers to present their work on tables in the during our symp symposium. And um, so um, there was the possibility to, to applicate to this uh, uh, portfolio work. You had to send 10 images, a short text and, and biography. And uh, the board of directors of the German Photographic Academy selected then 20 photographers uh, to present their work. Um, so it was mostly in the House of Photography, Deichterhallen, Hamburg, because it was mostly during our winter release really, session. Uh, and there we had the possibility to put the tables in the exhibition space. And I think it was a very good uh, possibility uh, for the photographers to get in discussion with the audience. Uh, and I think um, it was a good start for the most photographers because many of them later also get members because they later they presented. It's also that we uh, show a selection uh, of the nominated works in our magazine and also on the uh, on our website. I think for many photographers, it's really the possibility to uh, find a bigger audience for their work. And uh, during the pandemic, um, uh, we changed uh, to online portfolio work and we made it more often. Also we made during the pandemic five online portfolio works uh, because we thought it's very important in the time where photographers had no chance uh, to exhibit their work that there is still uh, a platform uh, for them to show their work and to get in discussion uh, and um, by this way, the audience get also more international. Also, there were much more international participants. In the earlier time, it was mostly from the German schools. Uh, so, and then uh, I think that was also a positive part, really, of the pandemic situ situation that we developed more and more the online presentations. But about this, I think Boris will tell much more because he's uh, one of the inventors of our online uh, DFR. Yeah, I think Wolfgang and I are the most active in social media and online yeah, yeah. of all members. Um, I will show excerpts once we show the new web platform, but going back to what uh, Wolfgang mentioned, he mentioned the magazine. So there is a printed magazine that the DFR is all also producing. In the past, it was about um, showing the work of new members and of participants of portfolio reviews. And Wolfgang, do you know when the magazine started? That is something- Oh, that it's uh, changed often uh, the appearance. So I think in earlier times, it was the bulletin, which looked uh, very different. But I think since the beginning, although there was a kind of uh, publication, but in the form we had now, which is really like a very big magazine, I think we have uh, 10 editions perhaps, really. so I, have, I don't know exactly, but, um, but uh, I think for us, it's very important to have a good magazine as also to show really the work in a very uh, professional way uh, that it's not just an information magazine. It's yeah. really very much about images. I will show later because I have opened in a PDF and then we flip through. So the last thing that the DFR was doing for a long time is the Hill Medaille, which is an award for outstanding photography. And well, it's running since 1955. So that is like a very long time. And just to mention um, some of the award-winning photographers, it has been given to Vivian Sassen, Ute and Werner Mahler, Robert Häuser, Albert renger Patsch, and so on and so on. A whole list can be found online, but I will talk about this later. First, I would like to go back to the history. So we are now, 102 years old, <laughs> founded 1919 as Gesellschaft Deutscher Lichtbildner and renamed in 1993 as um, Deutsche Photographische Akademie. 
it's a very illustrious um, list of members. So when you go back, you will find there is somebody like the Bauhaus photographer Umbu, somebody that was very influential for the post-war photography in Germany, like Otto Steinert, or Gottfried Jäger, who was so active in teaching photography in Bielefeld that um, one could talk about the Bielefeld school, but there is none. What I like about Bielefeld is everybody does something different <laughs> and it's all strong. <laughs> so if you're looking for new talents, have a look at Bielefeld and what comes out of Bielefeld. There was Stefan Moses, there is uh, FC Gundlach um, who initiated um, the House of Photography Deichtohalle in Hamburg, which is now the largest uh, museum for photography in Germany. And the curator of Deichtohallen is our president. So we have a president and we have uh, an executive committee. Together there are like five and Wolfgang is one of them. So there's one question that we haven't uh, answered. How do you become a member? Yeah, It is a bit like, for me, sounds British, like you need to have a person that invites you to present and then you go on your present and then it depends on the presentation and the discussion. Um, if you are invited to become a member, if you are not invited or if you get a second chance. Wolfgang was the one who invited me <laughs> <laughs> to come and Ingo too, and the first time I came, I. I People were just like, I don't know, shaking their heads. They couldn't get around what I was doing. So I was invited a second time. And I'm one of those who had two turns. <laughs> so this is the history of the AFR. Um, in 2016, I started to push um, my colleagues to become more and more digital. And that was very simple. Like we started with live streams uh, five years ago on Facebook. Um, at the conferences. And then it was like, only if you felt comfortable to be streamed live. Like 2016, many of our guests didn't feel comfortable. Some of the members didn't feel comfortable. So we said, you decide. If you want to be live, we are streaming live. If you think your talk was somehow not your best, we don't archive it. But all the others we archived and you can find them on YouTube and it's growing and growing and growing. And that was the basis for everything else that we are doing now. And now we are entering in the year 2017, 18, when the big anniversary of 100 years, Deutsche Fotografische Akademie was approaching. And the question was, what are we doing? Yeah, we had some money accumulated. Um, but for me, just do an exhibition with a catalog, that's something you could have done in 1990, but now it was a hundred years later. So I sat down, I made a concept, I presented it um, to the executive committee and suggested to use part of the money to make the step into the next century, to say now we have become digital, if we really want to fulfill our goal to have a discussion about artistic photography with as many people as possible, we need to use them. And the reason why I did it is because that is my second profession. Many of my colleagues, they work for magazines yeah, uh, or do different or do teaching. Um, my job for one of my jobs of the last 22 years was uh, doing digital marketing. I was working for companies like Audi, for TV stations. Um, at some point I realized I have the most knowledge and either I do it or it's not going to happen. So I started to develop the platform with the help of a Polish curator who was living in Berlin, Andrzej Raszik. And then we came up with something I would like to present to you now. And now I'm getting, uh, opening my screen. And we go to our starting web page. 
So this is the English version. It's a very simple um, menu. You have the Academy about us, who is the executive committee. If you click on there, you see um, Ingo Taupan and Ruth Stoltenberg, our presidents, to so see the name of the committee and the addresses also of Wolfgang. Um, we have a page where you can find the amazing exhibition, 100 years that we did in Deichtorhallen with uh, several chapters and all the video talks. If we have time later, we might go back and then it would be Wolfgang's uh, turn again because he was doing the concept for this massive exhibition and he was um, doing it in three days, like filling the whole space. And if you have ever been to Deichtorhallen, it's huge. And it's one of the best exhibitions I have seen. So that was two years ago. What is new with the new web form? We are suddenly bilingual. That means we open up to non-German speaking countries and we invite guest curators. So if you go to the front page, scroll down, you have a guest curator and we have several of them. So we invite them to have a look at the portfolio of our members and choose their favorites according to any subject that interests them. So there's a little bio, a curatorial statement, and then there's a selection of work. And just um, flicking through this selection, it's never the same, it's always different. We have been doing 19 guest curators now, and I'm always amazed how different the approaches are. That's one of Wolfgang's works. And um, this is something that is ongoing. And what I do with the guest curators um, content is I share it on Facebook, I share it in Facebook groups, and we share it on Instagram. And that is something that works by itself. And it's new. It became one of our new activities. How do we get the guest curators? Um, we ask all members that put a portfolio online to recommend a person. And out of that pool, we are approaching people and invite them to um, become our guest curator. A second um, big column of our activities are conferences. So if you go to the web page, let's scroll down here, you see winter conference, summer conference, different places. And um, this is um, something that we have been doing in the past, presentation of work, discussion, also streamed online. And the portfolio walk has a menu item as well. So here you see examples from our portfolio walk winners and also the open calls for the portfolio walk. So let's go into one of those um, selections. That was one of those um, portfolio walks that we did. So you have an introduction about the person. And that is an introduction by a jury member. That means um, member of the DFR executive committee is having a look at, at the work because they are the jury. And then they really write an essay on the work. And you can click here through the images. And this is a work uh, by a Spanish photographer who was photographing people at night on a ferry. That's very, atmospheric and I really like this shot, yeah. So this is one option to just look out for new talent, go to our webpage and click through the portfolio walk participants. And you see it's a white mix. It became more and more international in the last years, especially during quarantine times. And um, it's different styles, it's different approaches. 
we talk about this later. So this is the portfolio walk. Going back here, activities, we have the David Octavius Hill Medal. And here you see the award winner and um, examples of their work. Like the last award winner have been Ute and Werner Mahler, also the founders of Ostkreuz. Ostkreuz is known as an agency and a school for documentary photography, which has its tradition in East German photography. And I think it's the strongest school for documentary photography in Germany. And the Malas um, are very influential. So this is what you can look up. So, and then the resources. We have been talking about the magazine. Here are the magazines that Wolfgang um, had been mentioning in the new layout and before yeah. the old layout, it's the Bulletin till 2013. And if we click on one of those, you see the contents, the new members, the portfolio walk participants, um, imprint. And if you go down, you can actually download the magazine as PDF. So you click on here, it opens up, downloads, and then let's do it a little bit smaller. You can click through the magazine, read the texts, and see how the work is presented. So it's a lot of images and then also little text about the work. So let's scroll down. Um, this is a work by Loredana Nemesh, also a member of ours, something that I found very interesting. Um, she was photographing in uh, Frankfurt, which is the German capital of finance, uh, bankers and staging portraits with them just with what they had, like with suits and plants and all the stuff that was available in the office. Yeah. <laughs> That's something that I really like. So, that is um, the magazine. Let's close this here and continue. So the archive. The archive is a written archive um, and that has been um, organized by another colleague of ours, Corinna Weidner, who was organizing and structuring the written archive. And every month she is just going through it and then she picks something and sends, sends it to me. And I find this really fascinating. Like, um, I show you two excerpts. Let's go to page two. It could be something like um, this which is a um, technical description of how to work with shadow in photography, which is something from the 50s. It could be a postcard um, between two members. There is here a postcard from Manway to Walter Boyer. Um, Wolfgang, Walter Boyer was president, yes? Uh, yeah, I think. In the late 60s, yeah. 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 So that is something that um, is also becoming bigger and bigger. So what we do is we expand. We have something like this web page, and you will see that we are just expanding on um, building on that foundation. And we have open calls for each month also to um, yeah, have something that is very valuable for new talents and students. And then we have links, and that is just recommendations by members. Could be legal things, could be artist talks, could be other online platforms, photo books. Um, and with those links, you always see 
who did recommend something. Yeah, like the first link before the books was recommended by Selina Lansford, who is the director of the International um, Photography Forum in Frankfurt. And I love this variety and we just want to use that knowledge of all of those members to provide something that is of value uh, for everybody that is interested in the subject. And now we get to the most um, important part, which was very, just something unique. So we are in the members now. Member directory with names on where we live is nothing new, but keywords are. So in the past, we just had a list of names, who is member, some were linked, some were not linked. There was no system and it was tough work to get through all of those links and to get an idea what are they standing for. What we did is we set up a system of keywords that helps our guest curators and everybody that is interested in finding the work that interests them the most or that goes into a field of interest. So what we have is profile type. We have members that do more than uh, being photographers. They work in journalism as well, in education, are professors. Uh, art historians work in theory or curate. So that is something that is a way of browsing all the portfolios. You can browse the birth year or better the decades. You can browse where they live, but I think that's less interesting. You can browse if they are alive, dead or um, inactive. That means they don't have a portfolio online like yet. The way that we are setting this up is open to be continued into the past. That means we have the potential to put dead members on there as well. It would be a collaboration with universities to create um, a portfolio that fits into our system. So these are the most interesting things for me. This is the objective. What are you using photography for? And that is something that the executive committee, um, myself and Gottfried Jäger, who is like one of the most important theorists for photography in Germany, were setting up. And that means, um, are you photographing what you have in front of you, what you see, and you are interpreting what you see? That would be interpretation of the visible. Or do you want to photograph what we can't see? Do you want to represent something invisible, which is a psychological approach or an emotional? Do you want uh, to photograph in a way that it's not connected to what we actually see? That thing goes into um, abstract forms. Or do you want to reflect on the medium? And um, I show some examples here. So we go into the abstraction. And then we have someone like Gottfried Jäger, who is the grandfather of this. And um, we click into his work. If you're interested how this produced, um, the whole theory behind it, I think that was him in his early years at DFR. Um, go check him out. I think there was a show about um, abstract photography at Tate one or two years ago, and he was in it as well. And um, besides Jäger, we have in the abstract section um, much more people. I just pick two or three. Like this, I found very interesting. Manfred Kage, he was doing big shows in the 60s and 70s with microscopes. And he was really going into a microscopic world and creating weird things. Yeah. It's a bit sad that a copyright sign is put upon the photography, but the family says it has been stolen so often 
they need to do it. And then we have something like Esther Hardenmeier, who is like a next generation of work that um, works with geometric forms. But her photography is also an object. If you see the shadow, it becomes 3D, 2D. It's a mix of what you perceive and what it could be. And to show you that um, range of different possible objectives, we go to interpretation of the visible, which then can be much more um, in a traditional or more traditional um, photographic style. But um, let me just look for one special person like this one I would like to show. Andreas Drogisch um, grew up in the Eastern side of um, Berlin and his portraits of the 80s in Eastern Berlin are very poetic, sometimes funny document of those times. Or there's something that um, you also showed um, in the slideshow earlier, Birte Kaufmann, who was photographing um, travelers in Ireland. She would fit into that section too. Or let's go to Haubitz and Zoche. Um, they were very fascinated by the architecture in India. And what you see here is churches in uh, often Kerala, who is the most Christian um, state in India. And they were fascinated by how this architecture is so different from what we do. They have done a lot of um, architectural um, work on churches, on movie cinema theaters. Let's go to the next reflection on the medium and see what we can find here. Maybe we take Dörte Eisfeld. Dörte Eisfeld has been around forever. I know when I was a student, like my professor was a big fan of her work. She was like very important for him. And years later, I met her um, through DFR. And that is again, something that was um, a very strong influential position in the eighties, like this way of photographing a snowball, different setups and light settings in the eighties or later uh, working with the backside of Aqua Pro Vera photo paper and creating shades and images and shadows long before others started to do it. I've seen many of work like this in the last one and a half years. So that is something on the medium and one more from this side. Kurt Buchwald, yeah, that is also very good. He grew up um, in East Germany as well. And um, he has a wicked sense of humor. So he says, if I'm not allowed to photograph all that I want, I just work with this as an element. And he put shutters in front of his lens so that a part of the photograph is always covered and can't be seen. He was doing this as a conceptual work. And his presentations are often very funny and recommended if you understand the language. 
last section, and then we move on because uh, looking at the time, um, we are running a bit short. Representation of the invisible. So let's have a look. Ute. Ute is a photographer from Cologne and she did a brand new work that is going to be shown, has been shown as a festival right now, which is Back to Nature, um, where she is um, buying objects that you can use for interior design to make it pretty in your house, like the slide of a cactus tree and puts those artificial representations of nature back into real nature, like plastic flowers on a meadow, fake and real clouds, again, flowers. So that's the question, what is, what is real? What is fake? And so I show one of my works. Where this is a work I do with an artist in Bangladesh. We work from our archives, we destroy the images and we put them together again, mainly analog. And that is something that is more like a psychological journey into, um, into an immersive experience. And you see the presentation with flags and frames and wallpapers is uh, not like the conventional presentation of work. Next weekend, I'm driving to Arles and I have a room installation down there, which is the largest I have ever done is going to be based on this work as well. So um, going back to the keywords, these are the objectives. We also have a list of approaches. Is it conceptual? Is it documentary? Is it ethnographical? Whatever, it's a huge list. Again, we have keywords of the subject matter. Is your work about age, about America, about architecture or chaos? No problem, we have it. What's your technique of creating the image? Are you working with 360 degree photography, black and white, camera obscura? Or if you are not a photographer, but more an art historian, what is your tool then? Is it critique, editorial, essay? So you can use those terms to browse and then going down, you see the list of themes is long. Presentation, how is the actual work presented? We have a photographic image, but what are you doing with it? Is it a collage? Is it a diptych? Is it an installation? Is it mixed media and so on? So this is a variety of tools you can use to browse the content and the portfolios. And then when you go on members news, it's basically a feed from what you find on Facebook. And this is what our members are posting that we are then forwarding or the stuff that we post ourselves. And then we are here in Facebook. This is our page. We have our talk advertised Tonight we have new books from members and we reached like last, last week, uh, last month, like 8,000 people on uh, Facebook. We have um, a different um, approach on Instagram. On Facebook, it is spreading what our members are posting plus guests um curators and on instagram it is mainly the guest curators so let's go down here we had one guest curator francisca schmidt 
And this is her selection of work. And then if you get into any of those selections, like this, you see, um, I think Instagram is going to help you translate it. You have a quote by the photographer about her work. You have a quote by the curator, why she likes and why she was choosing that image. And um, every selection is differently. So it's an endless stream of inspiration that we are showing here. So that was 2019. Um, then we had Corona and um, our conference could not happen. So we had this post here, sorry, spring conference, we can't do. And we had no clue what was happening, if it was getting better or not, and then it got worse again. And then we did an experiment. We said, let's try something else. If we can't do a conference, let's build on the digital stuff we had already been doing. And we created an online festival over one week from Monday till Sunday. And we called it um, Photo Dialogues. I have to switch to the German version here because it was mainly in German and the content on the web page in English is just a percentage of. So what we did here with the photo dialogue was um, having an online festival and debate on photography in different formats, 80% live and 20% pre-production. We had two partners. We had the Darmstädter Tage der Fotografie, one of the main German festivals and Die Motive, one of the main German podcasts on photography as art. We were using those formats like you are doing now as well, like combining Zoom and Facebook Live, we had Instagram Live. And then we had different categories of content. We had dialogue with guests, which was the normal guest presentation. And uh, you had the names, you had a key image, and once the presentation had been done, the video is uploaded on all of those channels. So if you want to watch it tonight, you can choose between YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. Besides the guest presentations, we had presentations by members. And then we had something which I really did like, which was one of the big successes, was an editing challenge. And here Wolfgang comes in again. <laughs> because Wolfgang is known for two things. Um, he is a master of book editing and he is a master of crazy dancing. <laughs> if you just Google crazy dancer of all, you will find Wolfgang. Yeah? But there's also nobody like him who can actually make sense of a mountain of photographs, put them into a structure and make a book format out of it. And what we did was the following. We had Wolfgang, having a mountain of images from a working process by one of our members. And then we had two members of the festival jury from Darmstadt and the three tried to make sense of the same body of work and trying to put them in order, explaining why they chose certain images and why they didn't. And uh, it was a long Zoom call. So we split it up in two. YouTube parts, and um, I recommend just watching it. Yeah, I think we have to do another editing challenge, Wolfgang. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wolfgang also gives uh, online um, workshops now because he's as fluent as a fish yeah, with online and combines different tools. And like you said to me before, you find online it's even more effective than offline. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is something that we just tried out in October. And then we had a different uh, new format we called reverse portfolio walk. The normal portfolio walk is you have um, students, talents sitting at a table showing their work and the experienced others walk around, have a look, comment. Now we were turning this upside down. We were pairing a member of DFR and um, a talent. And the talent was having a look at the portfolio of the member. And the member was having a look at the portfolio of the talent. And then it was like two parts. 
like talent is presenting DFR member and vice versa. And then they entered into a discussion. And that is something that I really liked because it was taking um, younger talents seriously and, and invited them to participate in a dialogue on an equal level. So we had one talk in English that was myself and Elena and the second one with Carlos and Andrea Strogisch. I showed both of the works before. I think Watch Carlos and Andreas was one of my favorites um, from this format. And then we had a dialogue with Instagram users. And that was something that I've tried out um, with the podcaster that I was working with on Instagram Live. In October, you could only combine two Instagram accounts. So what we wanted to do is Alex and I wanted to talk and we wanted others to join us and to participate. So what I was doing here is a workaround so that Alex and myself had one place available for anybody that would like to enter. I had to put them into my image. <laughs> so that was still with a laptop behind. Him. Nowadays, it's possible. Instagram just opened up Insta Live. And now you can join Insta Live um, debates with four accounts. And we had been doing this before it was technically possible. And that was fun. We had an hour of talk and we said, okay, whatever subject we are talking about, five minutes. So you see here on this image, there was a little sand clock. And um, when time was over, we just changed subjects. We are really going speed. We didn't want to become boring. Besides that, we had formats that had been pre-produced. Yeah? We tried out um, something that we called Builder Bingo, which is a bingo of images or more a ping pong. We paired two members and each of them communicated through images. And like, I'm sending a picture to Wolfgang. Wolfgang reacts to that picture and sends me one of his. And then I reply to this. So it's a conversation and it's like playing chess. It's strategic. Where does he want me to lead? Where do I want him to lead? And we have done that. Um, and then added a third member to write about that exchange. How that did the third person perceive that exchange, that dialogue? Then we had a dialogue with our followers uh, on Instagram and Facebook. We said, ask me anything, just ask questions. And um, I collected them. I sent them back to our 140 members and they replied. They replied uh, in written, they replied with videos and that was something that was perceived very well. And we had a dialogue between our podcaster and the festival who were doing an extra podcast edition. So that was October, and now we are approaching April 2021. Again, pandemic still on. My experience from the first photo dialogue was, was great, it was great success. We reached like 16,000 people. Normally, when we have our conferences, it's like maximum 100, 150, and that is more. But it was also more work. Like the first photo dialogues had been like three weeks of work for me. And you have to take into account that this is all like our, yeah, we just do it because we love it. Yeah. So I said, if we do a second edition, we have to make it shorter with less work. And uh, one of the most work was the pre-produced contents. So we decided to go only live and to only have guest presentations and Instagram live talk. And so we did in April. And because in October it was one week nonstop, we then said, no, let's do it a month every Tuesday. 
So it's easy to remember. It's two and a half hours, three hours on a Tuesday evening. It's not so packed. It's easier to, to manage also for me. And um, I did again the Instagram speed talk with uh, Alexander Hartmann from the Motive podcast. And then we had guests, which you can see here, that were introducing their work. And um, you can, all of them have a little description and then click on a gallery and get an idea if this is a body of work that you like, that you would like to know more about. So now, um, I think we go to our Instagram channel to give you an idea of how it, this looked like on Instagram. So, so this is how it started. So we had um, a post announcing a presentation. In that post, we have a little bio, who are you, where are you living? So we used the structure of our keywords from the web page. And we asked them to put themselves into those categories. What are you using photography for? What is your approach? What is your theme? What is your subject? And then there are examples of the work. So that was an appetizer for everybody to decide do I want to participate live or not? And we did it like tonight, like Zoom, but Zoom was open to everybody plus Facebook. And later, the recording was uh, shared on YouTube and on Instagram. And then it looks like this as IGTV. You can then see it's me saying hello to the people. And then there's a presentation in between. And if you make it large, yeah, you can still watch it. And there had been some very beautiful, funny moments. Like one of my favorite moments was this. <laughs> so um, let's go in the. So this is me. This is uh, my podcaster friend. This is Ingo Tauporn, who is our president, who then joined the conversation. And because Ingo was part of it, at some point we had Michael Weseli, who was also joining the conversation. And he just did a big work about the National Gallery, National Gallery in Berlin uh, being renovated. And he was in the guest house of Steidl. Steidl is one of the most well known um, book editors of photography. And um, so we convinced Michael Weseli to show us the guest house of Steidl. We said, how does it look here? And he was going through with his smartphone and showing us that there were like um, fashion photography of um, Wolfgang, what's his name? <laughs> fashion photography, I, I don't know. Ooh. Lagerfeld, it was Lagerfeld on the walls of Steidl's guest house. Yeah? And those things you just can't plan. Yeah, they were massively funny. And um, this is something that we are going to um, continue and everything will be available on our three or four platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and the web page. And now we possibly um, stop here and I give an idea of the, the, the future to come and how to continue. So far from 2016, by starting with Facebook live stream to create the web platform, to create like two online festivals with different formats, one thing was building on the other. And um, with the Corona pandemic also came new forms of funding, funding to do what we do to present work, to talk about work because museums were closed. And now we have funding to continue what we have been doing in October and April, 
on the larger scale for a year. And that is something that might start around August. And um, we will meet tomorrow actually <laughs> to decide what we are going to do. And we have, again, different categories. We want to have um, digital formats that have dialogue with interested public, with young talents, our members, curators of festivals, museums, uh, art historians, and everybody that is something like a multiplier or influencer. Um, we will have, again, the Insta Speed Talk, but there's something that I would like to try out um, that I will describe to you at the end. Um, earlier this year, I tried to have an artist talk on Instagram. Yeah, but not an artist talk where it's just like my smartphone and you see my face or you see the work I have in the gallery. I did an artist talk with three different smartphones. So the gallerist and me and the collaborator, we were all filming in one space. You have to have a headset, not to have any echoes. But if you have solved this technical problem, it's very interesting for anybody to watch yeah? because you don't see one perspective. It would be like seeing me here and from there and maybe from top. And this is something that I would like to expand to go and have a look at exhibitions. So like um, Wolfgang lives in Cologne. I live in Berlin. Given that I'm coming to Cologne, I say to Wolfgang, Wolfgang, is there any interesting photo exhibition that you have not been to, let's go together. So we would go to the exhibition in Cologne and we would film what we see and we would talk about the work. Like normal visitors and friends and everybody that is interested would talk about the work. This is one element. It's not an artist talk. It's not a talk with the gallerist. It's two visitors loving photography, looking at the body of work. But because it's Instagram and we can have four people being involved live, it's not just Wolfgang and me in Cologne, it's also Alex in Hamburg who is being part of it. And he is looking at what we are doing and he is asking us and he is entering the debate possibly with different opinions. And that is then an, an, a live conversation that everybody on Insta that follows us can watch and if you would like to participate, you can just enter the conversation and be the fourth person to be live in the stream. So these are the um, future formats I'm currently developing and I would like to experiment with to take the core idea of the FR, dialogue about photography, um, further and to use the technology that is available. And that is the end of uh, my presentation. One hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, I'm curious if there are any questions from Facebook or from your side to Wolfgang. Yeah, for, first of all, many thanks for this presentation and for this perfect timing uh, as for the questions yes we do have uh, you have just talked about this new approaches to online activity and we had the question uh, approximately from the very beginning of this talk is what is your approach to making digital or online exhibitions what digital interactive tools do you use vr ar special interactive web design Um, we don't have um, a VR, AR exhibition right now. Um, I have been in, in my like business persona interested in AR for a long time. Um, but right now, I don't see a use for Deutsche Fotografische Akademie or for my own art practice, but I really find it fascinating. I had a look at all the virtual exhibitions 
of festivals and of others. And um, I don't know, it never caught me. Yeah. I was a heavy user of Second Life like 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And many of those exhibitions look exactly like this. <laughs> like Second Life from 2006, yeah. And um, the, the photo scene in Cologne is very active as well. And they do an online festival and they have a cafe where you can get with an avatar. And again, it's Second Life 2006, yeah. Um, it also is um, for um, an older group of people, um, I think even more difficult to enter. Like our members are, I don't know, Wolfgang, what is the average age, 60? Oh, possibly. yeah, but it's getting it's low. It's yeah. getting younger. More and more young people are coming yeah. in, I think. Yeah, but early. it is like that to, to become invited, you need to have some body of work that already shows strength. So I, usually it starts like around 30, yeah, that to develop something like this. Yeah. So naturally our members are older and even with the tools that we are using now, I see many of them dropping off or dropping out where they say, I can't follow. And then it's my task to help them to put a portfolio together and put it online because we have members that are also like 80 and they had a fascinating life and fascinating work. And then I'm working with them one-on-one. -on -one. It takes a lot of time to get what I have been doing into this format. VR would be not working, not working right now. Mm -hmm. And if you know about any VR or AR um, presentation that is not like Second Life, please send it to me. <laughs> I'm very curious to see. Yeah, I think the most important aspect of the online uh, presentation now is to uh, keep on the dialogue about photography. I think this is the most important. I think it's not the way to use really online things to make the perfect simulation of something. I think all we, all, the, all what we are doing in the photo dial, dialogues is using really all different kinds, really how to talk about photography, to, to show it, also the lectures where people are, are presenting their work and you discuss about the work. I think this is still the main aspect of German Photographic Academy. Yeah? So that you have an open discussion, that it's a non-ideological, -ide, non it's, uh, it's every kind of photography is accepted, but you are discussing very controversial about it. It's so, And I think we are also using the online instruments very much in this way, and then not to make the perfect il illusion of something. Well, Yeah, more questions? Yeah, one second. A uh, uh, question from Oleg. Are, are all of your events are free for participating? For example, portfolio reviews? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it, this is also from the beginning, there is no fee for every of our, so, so everything is free. And so all the, the participants, they can show, send their work. We are, the uh, jury is this deciding, and it's very important for us It's uh, that it's free, that we don't have a commercial interest in it. It's, uh, it's really all free. We work non-profit and uh, that what, yeah, we are only driven by like the members fee, which is like a hundred something euros. It's not much, yeah, according to the average income. And it's open to everybody that's interested. Like if the work is something that we love and think it's worth spreading, we spread. And also when we made the big exhibition, this 100 year exhibition in Daishal in Hamburg, for sure we saw that it cost a lot of money, but then, but then, we, and then we created a crowdfunding uh, uh, campaign where every 
uh, participant uh, of the German Photographic Academy, every member uh, was uh, giving really uh, one or two pictures. Uh, and we got, I think, 33,000 euros really through this uh, uh, crowd, uh, crowdfunding campaign. So more and more you have to be very uh, open for different strategies to get the money to can produce what we want to, to do, but we don't want to make it really by a fee. <laughs> And if we are talking about money, um, what is the main source of funding for such an impressive range of activities? And uh, do we get any help from, from the state, from the government? No. Well, um, up until now, we didn't get any funding. We have first funding promised <laughs> that, that we then want to invest in the next year. But mainly all of this is run by self-exploitation. It's an idealistic attitude that those members um, who do it share. Yeah, Wolfgang did the whole exhibition layout and doing um, his um, the catalogs yeah, in, in his time. And I have done the, the concept, the setup. Um, just, yeah, I was basically not doing my work. <laughs> But getting, getting it all started, there had been points where I said, if I had known before how much work it is, I would have possibly never started it. But then you are in and you think, no way, I have to finish that. Yeah. I started, I'm going to finish. And I can say now um, it pays off. Like the strategy that I hoped to be working is working. Yeah, We are constantly growing and be people become more and more aware of us. And uh, my vision for DFI in the future is to also become more and more bilingual, uh, to cross that language border as well. And again, we have the foundation now with bilingual um, web page. The next step is to have bilingual events. As we're talking about the events, especially about this 100 years anniversary um, exhibition, there is a question that uh, uh, to, to Wolgan. The question is to Wolgan, uh, what was the concept to this 100 years anniversary exhibition and what was the main narrative for the array of archive and participants? Yeah, I think it was, uh, we thought very much about how we can structure really this big field. It was uh, participating 150 phot photographers finally. So, so, And we had a big trouble with our archive because it's in the city. So then we didn't get really the archive. Also, we often had to uh, change the strategy. But the most important thing that we said, we didn't want to have the classical structure to say there is a section. Uh, we don't want to separate it in years saying uh, we have the narrative coming from the early times to the newer time and we also don't want to separate it this is journalistic this is documentary this is exp exp experimental because we thought it's very important the dialogue between the images so so we have made really uh, different sections like uh, um, authenticity and in, uh, and stage photography also always really pairing um, uh, words that you uh, that you don't directly understand what perhaps really is the difference so and uh, that in these different groups uh, we um, put really works together which are forcing the spectator to think about what this photograph has to do with each other. So we don't want to make a simple order structure to come to the normal uh, really reading of the images. And we had a very experimental presentation. We had big posters like uh, adhesive foils uh, in two meter to three meters. And we had really framed images. We had it on very different mat mat materials. And it was an immense work to bring all these aspects to together. Um, but I think it was um, for me a fantastic experience because normally I think there's a big struggle between the different sections. The people there working abstract normally don't really find very good uh, the journalistic work. Often people say there is no journalistic work in German Photographic Academy and so. And it was a big challenge to bring all the work together that all the work supporting each other. So, and finally, it was very interesting that at the end, 
nearly everybody really was saying, oh yeah, it was a fantastic exhibition because everybody supported the other one and there was no more big confrontation between the different groups. As it was a very, very important experience for me that you have to find the form to bring things together that you are dealing with a controversial thing, but to use it as a more, as a positive aspect of it, yeah? That the pictures are forcing each other because they are different, really, so, and not, not bringing all similar things to, together in, in, one, in, so in, in one group. Also, not the typical archive, uh, archiving and not the typical German system. <laughs> I think that Wolfgang was the perfect person to do it, yeah? because he's the genius in editing, yeah? and the edit and the, the putting together of parts that he was doing, like the book workshops, he also did like in his very big book <laughs> of an exhibition. And um, I can recommend to go to the webpage to the 100 years section. We have documentation about the exhibition in PDF. We have 360 degrees. I think one member had a drone flying through the, the museum. And at some point in the late summer, early um, autumn, there will be the catalog. And that will be available through our web page as PDF, possibly as well. And will be a very big catalog with different really catalogs to every section. Uh, so and really put it to, together like in a cassette. It's so so. I think it will. It's very important for us that this publication also brings the spirit of uh, of the exhibition. And another question, what is the relation between DFA and German photography stars like Andreas Gurski and Thomas Ruf? <laughs> That's also often the question because I think uh, um, perhaps really the uh, German photography Photographic Academy will also shows that there's something different other than the better school really so in Germany, because for sure they are very dominant. I think if you are going to other countries, I think it's the only names they are knowing. And if I make perhaps a lecture in Italy about German photography and showing other photographs, the people are very astonished because they say, wow, we only think that there's really uh, Stutt and Guski. It's so I think they also would not come really to really a meeting of the German Photographic Academy to discuss about their works. It was so I think because normally I realize that they're not so open for discussions. It's so, um, so but uh, I think, uh, yeah. Huh? Um, we do have uh, a member out of the Düsseldorf School. Maybe. Yeah. Boris Becker. Yeah. 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 Do we have more? No. Gefella? Uh, Gefella, I think it's not. Uh, not really. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, but the fun, the fun fact is um, that Gefella was asking Gorski to become a guest curator. Yeah. He said no. <laughs> no. As a, normally, they are not very open. They are not very... No, not I think, I think uh, it, what we do is like we do it for non-profits. Yeah? So just being a guest curator is non-profit too. Yeah? That means you have to invest time and to, to write the text and to make a selection of images for the love of the medium. I think if you are on that top level, you are like a top manager. You really have to decide with whom you spend your time and for what, yeah? And then um, your life becomes more and more, yeah, streamlined, yeah? And you don't have time for those things and you don't need to network anymore. Next question. I okay. like the questions. Uh, currently, I see no more questions in the comment section on Facebook. So if you have any questions, please write them down. Yeah, but really, the lecture was so comprehensive. It's re re really very hard to ask anything because you, you gave so, so much information about the activity of DFA. So if we have no questions, I might pass the word to Katja, Katerina, please. Yeah, I would like to actually to thank you, Boris and Wolfgang, because it was really like a lot of and really nice information. And I feel right now that we have like homework for this <laughs> evening to research <laughs> and to discover more from your web page, because like you, how I saw, like you have a lot of incredible information. And really it's like uh, how I see it, it's perfect. Like if you would like to know the more about the 
German photography, except the uh, Thomas Ruf and uh, Gurski and others, then it's like the perfect, uh, the uh, German Academy of Photography, because like you really collected uh, a lot of artists and really like a lot of information. And thank you for this presentation. And then you open up this uh, possibility for us to make our own research. Well, thanks for inviting. It was a pleasure being here. Yeah, thank you.